Hello everyone, I am Yuta Hirakawa, a doctor course student at Stoke University. Today, I will talk about abiotic selective synthesis of ribose 5' phosphate in bullet-rich environments. My research interest is the origin of life and origin of nucleic acid. The current life uses two types of nucleic acid, DNA and RNA. A DNA holds gene information, a RNA catalyzes the reaction to make protein, and protein works as biocatalyst in our body. RNA can store genetic information and catalyze the reaction. So some researchers think that primordial life used RNA as gene information store and as a biocatalyst to, du to duplicate themselves. This thought is called RNA world hypothesis. Based on this hypothesis, uh, RNA formation is one of the essential steps for the origin of life. RNA is a polymer of nucleotides. So we need to make nucleotide first. The nucleotide uh, is consists of three components, ribose, nucleobase, and phosphate. The component of a nucleotide probably existed on the areas, particularly in an evaporitic environment. Ribose and nucleobase would have formed by condensation reactions of small molecules, such as formaldehyde and formamide. Some researchers also found these molecules in carbonaceous chondrite. Phosphate will have contained in phosphate minerals, such as abatite. And evaporation could condense these molecules. So the bullet-rich evaporitic environments could have accumulated the building blocks of nucleotide. The nucleotide formation from this component is also investigated. Previous research reported that nucleotide could have formed be a nucleoside formation and following phosphorylation. The phosphorylation reaction goes well using urea as a catalyst. The nucleoside, a nucleoside synthesis is chemically possible, but the plausibility on the prebiotic earth is questionable. So the nucleoside, uh, nucleotide formation has not completely succeeded. Nucleoside synthesis needs step-by-step -step reactions of small molecules. It is unclear how geological events made such complicated reactions possible. On the other hand, phosphorylation is a one-pot reaction. We do not need a complicated procedure. Uh, these results mean that phosphorylation is a simpler reaction than nucleoside formation. It is difficult to assume that a complicated reaction occurred before a simple reaction. So phosphorylation should have, uh, should have occurred before the nucleoside formation on the prebiotic earth. In addition, traditional phosphates are different from uh, biosynthesis. Current life makes nucleotide uh, be a ribose phosphate formation and following nucleobase addition or nucleobase construction. However, the traditional phosphate makes nucleotide, for, uh, nucleotide from nucleoside formation and its phosphorylation. So we thought that ribose phosphorylation before the nucleoside formation is more reasonable for the nucleotide formation. This bionarogous pathway has partially succeeded. This previous research uh, reported that nucleotide formation from sugar phosphate using small reactive molecules and UV light. However, uh, no one reported the ribose 5' phosphate formation under the prebiotically plausible condition. So this alternative pathway has not got supported well. We think that there are two difficulties to make a ribose 5' phosphate low stability and low selectivity. 
ribose is very unstable in heat condition and quickly turn to brown tar. Even if ribose can react with, uh, with phosphate, ribose uh, one prime phosphate selectively forms and ribose five prime phosphate does not form. To solve these problems, we focused on borate. Borate will have existed in the evaporitic environment on the areas. Borate can stabilize sugar and uh, ribose preferentially forms among all other pentoses. So the borate rich environment, borate rich environment can contribute to the accumulation of ribose. Borate can stabilize ribose by forming this uh, ribose borate complex and control the phosphorylation site. We thought that 5 prime hydroxyl of ribose could be phosphorylated in the presence of borate. So we simulated the borate rich environment, borate rich evaporitic environment and conducted ribose phosphorylation experiment under the condition. So the objective of this research is to investigate the effect of borate, borate rich environment on the phosphorylation of ribose to find a new route, new bioanalogous route for nucleotide. Here is the method for the experiment. First, we prepare the clear solution containing ribose, disodium monophosphate, boric acid, and urea as a phosphorylation catalyst. The sample was heated for 24 hours at 80 degrees Celsius. The lids of microtubes were, uh, were opened to evaporate the solution. After the experiment, we added the sulfuric acid solution to the sample residue, and the sample was heated again for one hour at 90 degrees Celsius to remove bullet and urea from the ribose. And then we analyzed the sample by HPLCMS. Here's the result of the experiment. The top figure, uh, top figure is a standard of ribose phosphate. The black line is ribose five prime phosphate. The blue line is ribose two prime phosphate and the yellow line is ribose three prime phosphate. The middle figure is the standard, uh, uh, sorry, the middle figure is the sample with bullet and the bottom figure is the sample without bullet. The X axis is the retention time and the Y axis is the intensity. This shows that the sample peak, sample peaks have the same retention time as the standard of ribose five prime phosphate uh, and have the different retention time as a standard of two prime and three prime phosphate. So ribose five prime phosphate was selectively formed in the reaction. The yields were 22% in uh, with borate and 4% without borate. This 22% yield with borate is very high as the phosphorylation yield. This result shows that borate contribute to the uh, contribute to the formation of ribose phosphate. We also evaluated the yields of phosphorylated product of pentoses other than ribose. Here is the result. The upper left figure is the is ribose experiment. The upper right is a rabinose, and lower left is dyros, and lower right is rixos. The yields are 22% in ribose, 8% in arabinose, 5% in xylos, and 11% in rixos. So surprisingly, the ribose phosphate has the highest yield among all other pentoses in the presence of borate. Here is the result in the absence of borate. The yields were 4% in ribose, 4% in arabinose, 2% in xylos and 2% in rixos. So there was no apparent difference in the yields in the absence of borate. These results show that borate 
contribute to the preferential formation of ribose phosphate among all other pentosides. Ribose is very unstable sugar, and other sugars must have existed on the prebiotic earth. So it has remained unclear why primordial life selected ribose as a nucleic acid component. Previous research found that bullet can contribute to the preferential formation of ribose. We found that bullet can also contribute to the preferential phosphorylation of ribose. This finding shows that bullet can increase the selectivity of ribose in not only sugar formation, but also phosphorylation. Ribose pipeline phosphate could be preferentially formed in the presence of bullet. These findings open the new bionarose route for nucleotide. In this route, phosphorylation occurred first and nucleobase combined later. This route is closer to biosynthesis in contrast to the traditional routes, nucleoside formation and phosphorylation later. In this study, we found that a bullet rich environment could contribute to the preferential formation of ribose 5 prime phosphate. A further chemical evolution for RNA will have occurred in the same environment. So this result indicates that the bullet rich environment could have been a, uh, could have been a probable place for the origin of nucleotide and RNA. This is the summary and the end of my slides. Thank you for your attention.